Good evening, I'm Zaragana. Welcome to the studio this evening. My apologies for being late, but it was a busy day today and I needed to get some tea. Got in late, have some tea, and now we are here. So, the next thing is to start and put some grass on this. But before I do that, I want to drink some tea. Um, before I do that, uh, I want to just have a bit of a practice of some different ways of doing it on just a bit of board. So that's what we're going to do. So there's two different ways I can do this. One, I can put the blades of grass in first and then put the ink over the top. Two, I can put ink on the board and then put blades of grass over the top. Or three, I could get a coloured pencil out. I've got some watercolour pencils somewhere. Let me just see if I can find them. Very metallic colours, which is not exactly what I was after. Watercolour, there we go. Okay, I have an option now of watercolour pencils. So we'll try that. I'll, uh, I'm not going to use water on them. So, right, first thing I'm going to need is I'm going to need a knife blade pen, which is this one, because I want really fine lines. I could and may use that one, so we'll try both. So, turn the machine on, plug in the pen, and take a drink of tea. The weather here is getting towards um, sort of wet and stormy, so the humidity is going up, which may, is making it feel warm here in the studio at only 26 degrees. Right, so let's see, have I got some here? Yeah. So lots of marks of grass. So I'm going to do three, two lots, two lots. do is put a green pencil over one, green ink over the other. Now this board is dark so it's not truly representative but to be honest I don't want to use some good wood to do this on. Okay so that's those. Right start with a green pencil. Let's go with a dark green pencil. So we'll put some green pencil just over the top. And what I'm going to do is also just put some plain green pencil here at the side.
I may consider wetting it given that it's a um, watercolour so green ink now literally for this not even a drop very little I know when I did the um, scraper board with the green ink I, use, I think I used three drops to do the, all of the grass that's on there now I suspect that um, mind you I was about to say I suspect the wood here will absorb some of it but I expected the sort of the porcelain clay also to absorb some of it so mm. well it's obviously darker like that so let's just put some ink next to it Just wipe that off so that I don't get green ink on me. And what I'll do now is I'll put some pyrography over the top of both of those. That looks more like green grass than that does. Okay, so if we're going to do it, we'll put the pencil over the top of the ink. Can't really see that. Mm. The best one seems to be, <coughs> excuse me, the colour of the top of the pyrography. So, and probably the ink. <coughs> excuse me. Mm. Right, sorry about that. Okay. So, now then. Look, let me put this pencil back because I don't need the pencil. At least, not for now. As it looks like we're going to be using the ink. <coughs> Right, so lots and lots and lots of grass. Now this is all random but short 
strokes. In fact, I'm doing very little in the way of, of slicing. I'm more tending just to dot it down. Twisting the tool very slightly so that you get some crossover of the you know little strands that way you don't sort of get it it's easier to fill in the gaps that you might see so now there's an awful lot of just doing this which is off the bottom of the screen so that doesn't help does it at this point I could do with something just to lift this board off of here a little bit um, and this is where I disguise this mistake so I haven't tried to erase it in any way. I'm now just going to go over the top of it. Now you might be able to see now just how much just <laughs> you might just be able to see how much you've got all of this lot to fill in. But with something like this it is some of these small details like this that make the difference. Now I've got to be careful not to do long strokes of any kind because it's short grass. And I'm also working top down because <clears throat> the front grass is in front of the back grass. You know, this grass down here is in front of the grass behind it. <clears throat> and so if I do it the other way, again, the, the patterns don't quite match up. So you have to follow the uh, follow the real textures. Now the odd one that sort of if I just dot you know out of place isn't really an issue. It's just in general. I mean doing things like fur also same sort of thing because they will be the sort of the odd darker one where you can actually sort of see it's in front of something. And if it looked to be behind, but in front, it, that's you know that optical illusion. It's one of the like the Isha pictures. Uh, drives your eyes potty a little bit, trying to work out what it is, where things go. Now it might not be particularly significant, as I say, for little tiny strokes on grass like this. But as I've got to cover it all, I might as well do it systematically uh, following that general principle. Of 
quite often what you'll find yourself doing if you're not very careful is going back into exactly the same place literally the same cut as you just did a moment ago and that's <clears throat> another reason for just I'm just rotating the I'll exaggerate but I'm doing that <coughs> but just very slightly and what that does is I'm going across the cut where I was before if I get close to it I don't accidentally drop into it I go across it which of course fills in the gaps in the texture anyway but also stops that dropping which all it does is just cause a, a, a thicker darker spot now it's not too bad in in some places uh, to have some of that because you want to vary the color and the texturing uh, but what you don't want is a, a really dark deep brown color Some sometimes I mean you might just have a bit of you know poor grass and things so it really is just dependent on how it looks when you uh, you spend time making it how you want it to look okay hopefully the PC is doing okay yeah it looks like it is what we're we running 80 put 80% CPU, okay. <coughs> that PC is currently doing uh, a backup at the same time as I'm broadcasting. Um, I installed this morning, I installed some new backup software. And since about 2 o'clock today, my PC has been calculating its backup. I've got almost a terabyte of disk. And the way this software works is by creating a database of all the files so that it can do a delta um, of an incremental backup in the future. Uh, and since, well, for the last sort of six hours, it's been busy recording every single file on the machine. So it's not actually started backing it up yet. And I'm wondering what's going to happen when it does because it, I've got a gigabit LAN and it is possible that it would saturate the not only the network port but also the LAN card and if it does that the stream may be in trouble Very nice software there. Oh, it is so far. I'm using some network backup software, so I've got a server installed here on the LAN. And uh, uh, all the machines will be backing up to it. So far, the Windows, all but, well, most of the Windows machines, mine's one of the last ones to do, is backing up to this Unix server and um, one one of my Linux other Linux machines is backing up to it at the moment I haven't configured the others but that's one of the next jobs so I'm going to be doing Windows and Linux backup on the same server which is nice because previously I've been using Windows Home Server it's end of life and um, it's a bit of a pain sometimes and it won't connect to the server if you certain updates disconnect it and you've got to uninstall and reinstall and re-image and it's a really nice concept is the Windows Home Server backup but I need it to do Linux as well and I kind of need to turn the Windows Home Server off it's uh, as I say end of life no support uh, and it will I don't know how long it will be before they actually stop security updates on it but uh, I need to move sooner rather than later
Plus it hopefully should throw me a machine space so in the glass workshop I'll be able to have a, a computer to stream. So this could be grass or it could be trees a really 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 long way away. Applying pyrography right to the edge of the board is always interesting. <laughs> oh, by the way if you do uh, pyrography right to the end of the board always come off the board don't try and put pyrography onto the board so don't try and do that. Always do that the reason being is as you go off you go off if you try and come on unless you hit the, le the level exactly right you're more likely either to come over the top where there's nothing and waste your time or hit the side and then have to lift the pen up to come on you've stopped you've lifted you're still in the same place um, you've cooked the edge of the wood you've got a blob uh, which you may not want <laughs> if you want it really dark well mm, go ahead um, but uh, if you were just wanting to go straight off the page then um, yeah go off not on even here with a knife it, I'm holding it yeah I am so sort of still going from the board off so with the grass I can take the grass right up to the edge Now this can get really, really, really boring. And the trick is, um, I guess, to amuse yourself. Um, but don't be tempted really to try and shortcut it. It doesn't... Well, I haven't found a method to shortcut this sort of thing yet. The time spent is really worth it, but it is boring AF. And I don't normally swear, so. Just take pride in the fact that you're doing a good job. And carry on. Keep calm and carry on. Be careful as well not to do too I mean I'm not going like all the way down here and things or uh, doing blocks and things because you end up with stripes now grass sometimes you know you, people do try and get stripes in grass so it might be appropriate this thing is on like a 30 degree hill you don't want <laughs> nobody's nobody's cutting stripes on this on this lawn Now this grass is actually a bit long. <laughs> I 
but am I going to do anything about it? No, I'm not. I could get shorter grass uh, by using the tip of this tool, but the tip isn't as hot and it uh, cools down quicker. Actually, mm, I can sort of do it. But it's a bit easier to use the uh, to use the midpoint. Keeps my fingers away from the heat as well. So, lots and lots of grass. You you actually can see it, but here in person it kind of does look like grass because of the texture. So that's the um, that's why it becomes worth it. I mean, I, you could just kind of just fill this in with a single town, but. I don't think it would look like grass to be honest and I suppose you could do the odd graft grass tuft, tuft but then it would kind of look like dirt with just the odd graft grass. You know that's really hard to say grass tuft. Try saying that grass tuft. I keep wanting to say graft. I have no idea why. It's one of those things. And this sort of detail is kind of why some pyrography takes an, an awfully long time. I'm not being particularly careful about this either. I mean, it's just the long time on this is just because there is so much of it. Um, you may be able to get a tool. I guess that would help. I'm not quite sure what. I mean, you do sometimes get uh, pyrography tools for feathers, which have got like multiple uh, multiple strands. It's actually a coil, but it, it shows there's like multiple strands. But I'm not quite sure that would look, you know, scale wise, that would probably be. I mean, if you're doing a bird filling this, then I suppose that sort of thickness which is really like the writing tip I've got and um, that sort of thickness in doing the feathers probably is okay scale wise um, for this it would make the grass look like it was about this thick effectively because compared to the uh, to the hut I mean this is over scale even even now compared to what you know the size of the hook but at least what your brain does in looking at this is you see it as grass um, because it's spiky like grass and so it's grass and you don't fantastically notice it's over scale it might look a little long but uh, so not a very exciting stream I'm afraid but a, a necessary part of the pyrography Now making sure I am going over the edge I've done there so that I am actually sort of catching it looks like the grass is growing underneath there slightly I mean it's in perpetual shadow so you know the grass only goes so far but uh, now this blade is relatively sharp I mean it's not razor sharp but it is sharp and together with the heat it does mean that it cuts into the wood quite easily so I am um, going to just be keep an eye out for you know, mislicing a little bit of the wood off which can happen sometimes because then it sometimes gets stuck to the end and uh, if it gets Hot enough, you start getting blobs from it, and you just need to wipe the blade off. But now, anybody want to count how many blades of grass I'm doing here? 
welcome to counting with Zaragana. I have absolutely no intention of doing so but I will be able to say every single blade of grass I put in there by myself I did it myself I did it my way and my matter tune tonight boy that's out wow did it my way that's a little bit better god blimey it's such a long time since I did any singing long time ago but I used to be in a choir <laughs> It's amazing if you don't practice just how things like that, and what it was off tune, um, how you sort of lose that ability to, to be in tune. Mind you, there's no warm up or anything, so. But still, I've, uh, I could tell I was out, 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 off tune, but I couldn't bring it back in. Uh, we're getting there slowly. But we are getting there. At the end of this I can decide whether I actually want to put green ink on it or not. And then make sure you do keep going up, you know, some over the row above. You don't want straight rows with gaps in between. That's just not how grass grows. I'll drink a tea. You can sort of see the grass there. <laughs> um, it's making that look really white as you can see. Um, and it kind of looks like that's the edge of the grass, like fairly tallish sort of grass. And this bit isn't doesn't have any grass on it at the moment, which is kind of true. Enterprise. Computer monitoring error. Okay, fair enough. Uh, more grass. We will be doing this grass probably on another stream as well. <laughs> At least another stream, I would have thought. Unless I do some of it off camera. the other tool, the, the, the flat shader that I could have used with it doing using its toe to create fine lines almost certainly it would have created fatter ones uh, just because of the, whilst I can use it with the corner if I'm doing like lines and things dabbing down like this to get really short lines would probably have meant that I would have been getting not just the corner of the edge of the but the full face which would have made the lines um, a little bit longer and thicker as well 
and so it would not have looked quite as good as I think this is looking. This isn't quite a razor blade but it is sharp. I mean it's cutting into the wood here. The heat is helping that but it is cutting into the wood and wood do on its own without the heat just not as well. Is then you can use this tool for example to cut plastic or mylar for example. So if I when I was airbrushing or when I am airbrushing if I want a mask uh, for something I could get hold of a piece of mylar and then use this tool got whatever shape I wanted for the mask. Actually that's probably more better called um, a shield rather than a mask because I'm not I don't actually use them for masks. If I was going to do masking uh, I'll, I'll use uh, like a vinyl material which I put on and then uh, cut with a razor blade put that on the painting, cut with a razor blade around the edge and then peel it off um, where I want to paint. Often I put it back as well so I can paint around it because usually if you're masking it's because you want sharp edges. Shields allow you just sort of to not do, you know, not catch that so you're sort of masking it but you're not doing it uh, as formally should I say, and sometimes you use it just to restrict the amount of pain that gets into an area or just you know, freehand so that you get like a ruler's edge sometimes it might be a curved ruler's edge but a ruler's edge they can be very useful to you let's say when you're doing like the shed here I'd probably put it down there spray down along the mask so I'll get paint on, on there and it stops more at the edge sort of a freehand masking sort of technique it is and we do use shields for other things as well. But that's one of the primary uses. Stop the paint going where you don't want it to go and to make use of the edge of the shield. Now I haven't counted how many blades of grass are actually on in this area. I've not looked at the photograph to count them from the photograph uh, and I don't care. <laughs> this is just, it looks like grass. Getting closer and closer and closer. Doing things like this where you don't often feel like talking. It's a somewhat repetitive thing. I do still have to kind of concentrate on what I'm doing there. Uh, because I don't want areas to, you know, too much pyrography in an area makes it go darker. And I don't want black grass. I get black pyrography and if I put green ink over the top it will look black so the turn still does matter.
you know if I wanted to do a path it's almost a, a nice curve to do it with but I don't I can get darker areas if I want to, um, like I'm just doing a little bit here, just partly by coincidence, but essentially just push a little bit harder when you put the tool down. And it will actually slide in further and uh, therefore apply more heat. Oh, I hope this backup software doesn't take this long every time. Mind you, there is a change, uh, there is a different client available which you have to pay for licensing for because the solution so far is free uh, and I'm kind of inclined to pay the license for the new client which uses a, a block monitoring uh, service on the machine and therefore it knows what's changed. And so the indexing is a lot faster. And it may well be uh, worth paying for even just for that one facility. Because you don't have to if you don't want, by the way. It is uh, open software available free of charge. Or rather they grant you a license without need to pay for use of that license. Send your eyes dotty, does this? Well, not quite dot, but it does send your eyes dotty. I may not be able to keep doing this for very much longer. Um, I guess I, well, sometimes it happens with the cats, when I'm doing cats. Um, I maybe should have realised and done this in smaller smaller batches and done something on the, the hut, but the hut is largely finished now.
if you do see as I just did there like I had created a line you can just go back across where that line is and uh, it will then uh, tend to disguise it somewhat that's basically because uh, I didn't overlap the bits that I was doing enough which can be very easy to do, it's one reason why I'm trying not to uh, keep this as a straight straight edge I'm sort of making it uh, sort of jaggy, jagged because it's so easy to just go across in straight lines and then you get a banding effect Now you can do this sort of thing also with tiny small strokes. A little bit harder to control. You may actually get a cleaner, sharper finish from doing it. I'm not sure I could stand doing this for very long, just you know, making all these little tiny short marks. I mean it's uh, I'm just uh, I was just dabbing it down and that's sort of quite a bit of work as it's in itself hmm. 2020 so I've been doing this for a about three quarters of an hour now. Plus the time we spent doing the uh, doing a test. It's coming along nicely. It grounds it in the picture, so the you know, the, the hut now at least looks like it's on something, not just floating in midair, which is the which is the the purpose of it. That's what I used to stick under the bottom of there. Uh, but I used to do it with a board <laughs> in place. Okay. I've not got my drawing board on the easel here uh, to rest the, uh, the this pyrography board on, which is what I was doing before. It's a little easier to th do things like spin it and what have you, or hold it off the bottom with a an eraser. The slip is doing this. It's a little bit high. I could always stick another couple of boards underneath um, just to bring it up a little bit. But when, it, when this edge is tucked right down there, it's a little bit a little bit awkward. This sort of edge gets in your way. It's a necessary thing, but still gets in your way. No, I don't like that. I wanted to do this at an angle, something like that, just because that's kind of my natural way I'm stood here. That's kind of my natural angle for, for my hand. And so I'm getting upright grass. If really straight down I'd have a slight bias that way. Now we're doing something like this for this you can sometimes see the wood grain can see some of it. Um, often it doesn't, it, often with something like this, this sort of so effectively hides it you don't see it but that's um, a coincidence rather than by design. <laughs> what was that?
Somebody on the computer just tweeted, tweeted, well, tweeted, made a noise. Don't know what it was though. You probably you wouldn't have heard it unless it came through the microphone. Um, because the way I've got OBS set up, it can't hear directly anyway. The system sounds. Even though it is listening to um, OBS itself because of the uh, alerts and things like that which are driven from within OBS. So I do need to push their sound through to the stream. So I am making use of one of the Windows 10's features which is I can separate the sound for an application onto its own cable connection, virtual connection in my case which means I can capture things like the OBS alert sounds but not the desktop alert sounds unless they're loud enough to come through the speakers and uh, the microphone rather Uh, sorry, I'm not saying a great deal. Uh, with this, you just sort of tend. In some ways, it kind of just take, tend to get sort of lost in it, in what you're doing. Uh, it is highly repetitive, um, although you are sort of moving all the time. It still uh, tends to mesmerise you slightly. You know, I wonder, mesmerised, it kind of sounds like uh, hypnosis. And I'm half wondering if, because I've got a feeling there was a hypnotist in while long, you know, in uh, sort of Victorian sort of times called Mesmo. And I'm kind of wondering whether, uh, you know, the mesmerised is a um, an adjective that came to, you know, came when people were put in trance by Mesmo, so they got mesmerized. Just trying to do a little even shorter ones just here. Kind of it gets walked on. Grass is a little bit smaller. I don't know if it'll show up as such. Because I can see the edge of the grass at the moment, then it, it sort of does, but I, and it's. Um, once you can't see the edge of the grass, whether you'll notice it being smaller or not, I don't know. We're going to find out.
you really do want to try not to get strokes all in alignment with each other I mean, if you look at a lawn you can see that the grass isn't sort of perfectly aligned with its neighbour they are all over the place so that's what I'm mimicking here in a very labour intensive manner Well, that reminds me, one of the things I was going to look for today on the interwebs was propane cylinders. That's what gas you use um, when you're doing glass work. Well, generally, that's the, glass gra uh, the gas that you use when doing glass work. People do use natural gas, sort of household gas um, not very many people but it is possible to use that plumbed in just add oxygen um, and I gather butane possibly doesn't um, burn quite hot enough don't actually know and of course acetylene is quite a dirty gas so maybe not something that you want to use even if you can it smokes a lot especially when there's not enough oxygen oh dear excuse me it's surprising just how tiring this is that and getting up early. <laughs> I have kind of been known to sort of fall asleep doing this sort of thing when I do the cats. I don't think I've ever done it on stream, but um, sort of off streaming it, decidedly drowsy. And you sort of close your eyes and you, you know, you, somehow your brain goes oh this is nice and doesn't hum them for a while <laughs> and the weird thing when you're in that sort of state is your mind sort of seems really weird as well because you can go you know what it's really nice to close my eyes I'm going to keep them closed you know you're falling asleep, you know you have been asleep and yet you just feel like keeping your eyes closed and it's real sort of weird especially if you don't want to go to sleep and yet your brain does and somehow tricks you into not realising that it's going to sleep even though you know it's going to sleep So if you overlap the edges as you do it, it's like overlapping layers on, on paint, it uh, gives you a continuous sort of look. 
and fills in the gaps. So I'm quite pleased with the way this is going. It's going slowly, I wish it would go faster, but um, it is uh, colouring the wood as quickly as I put the tool down. I could maybe do with being marginally hotter, but only marginally. And that marginally hotter would just be really a speed thing. Because it sometimes takes a minute of time for the, uh, the the base of this tool to heat brag up. When the wood sucked all the heat out, Now the big question is, do I fancy popcorn tonight? <laughs> now a few years ago that would have been rather an awkward question, given that we used to have a cat called popkin, uh, popcorn. Now we could go back and add a little bit of a shadow for example, so this kind of looks a bit like a shadow. We can go back in and add a bit more of that in as well if we want it. Just literally by going over the uh, areas again.
Right. Ah, dear. So many tiny lines. I'm doing every individual blade of grass. this be a bit darker so I want it to look like it's in shadow or it's casting a shadow so we're making it quite dark that's essentially by putting a lot of more marks on the wood which means more heat in that area which means darker This is almost pointillism but in a slightly different elongated points. You know, rather than a shadow, maybe this is a cloud, which is, you know, a shadow of a cloud, which is making this grass darker. Mainly because I can't be bothered fanning it out and then filling that bit in as well, because I quite like that as it is. Apart from the obvious big holes, this is um, uh, purely random. If I got the odd hole, tiny hole, no bother, just leave it, carry on. It's not particularly noticeable.
Let's see if I can carry on for another 15 minutes, but it's getting quite um, tiring to do so. You know, it's surprising. There's this little bit left here, and it's kind of like, oh, I can do that in 15 minutes, you know, just knock that off. <laughs> That's probably more like an hour. You know what, I think I'm going to stop there. My eyes are going really weirdish, squiffy. Uh, so I never got round to doing the ink. We'll do that after, well afterwards, but at some point. But not just at the moment. But we are busy putting grass in. It looks good. We're grounding the shed. <laughs> I've just realised these bricks look like they're falling over, which is fine because they were in real life. The shed was gradually pushing them over. But, uh, yeah. Um, anyway, next stream, where we will continue with this. Next stream will be on Monday. So no streaming of the weekend at the moment. Uh, so Monday, 7pm UK time. It's 1800 hours GMT. If you want to see this stream again, it's available on Twitch as is probably sort of Wednesday or Thursday of next week. Back past there, Twitch unfortunately um, deletes them, doesn't keep them. So they are available on YouTube if you would like to see any of the earlier broadcasts. Almost every broadcast that I've done is available on, Twi on Twitch, it's not on Twitch, on YouTube youtube.com slash arrogant art something like about 800 800 hours 600 and odd videos all in real time apart from I think there's one speedy dope making something jewelry I believe yes ma making a jewelry chain uh, incidentally the jewelry chains and bead chains 
have available uh, to be bought if you want, the sort of thing you might have seen me wearing. Uh, they are on zaraganart.etsy.com and mentioning Zaraganart, there is also a website zaraganart.com which is work in progress but the idea there is to explain about some of the arts and crafts that I have done on stream with to some examples and maybe eventually sort of a picture of just about everything that I have done but uh, at the moment uh, life is just a little bit too busy to uh, to spend as much time as I'd like updating the website. So uh, but the only other thing to mention is uh, please follow here on Twitch and if you would care to do so also on Twitter that way if you want you can get the notifications when I go live and also um, helps the channel out a little bit and um, I would say I'm not a per fantastically prolific tweeter so most if not all of it is related to the channel and all the, uh, the crafts that you're seeing on, on the channel and it's not, I don't tweet what's for breakfast or anything like that so I'm fairly safe in that respect right with that hope I will see you on a Monday next stream 7pm UK time 1800 hours GMT thank you for watching bye for now